President Trump will receive a top secret letter straight from the desk of dictator Kim Jong-un. The meetings have been very positive. We'll see what happens. It's a process. President Trump granting a full pardon to Dinesh D'Souza, the conservative author and filmmaker who pleaded guilty to campaign finance fraud. To be a lifelong felon, I would never be able to vote, never have my full rights. And so I'm very grateful to President Trump for giving me those rights back. After 9-11, the greatest threat to our democracy lived in a cave. Today, he lives in the White House. It's a sad state when that's the level that you have to go at to win a Democratic primary. Apparently, an apology is good enough for Samantha Bee. And then she gets honored by Hollywood for advancing social change. You can say anything you want without consequence if you are a leftist anti-never Trumper. K-O-I-N-O-N-I-A. That is correct. So shy, so was I. Maybe that's why it was so hard to believe when you smiled and said to me, Are You gonna kiss me or not? Are we gonna do this or not? I think you know I like you a lot, but you're about to miss your shot. Are you gonna kiss me all night? Hey. It was the best thing kiss that I ever had Except for that long after that And I knew if I wanted this thing to last Sooner or later I have to ask Hold oh, your hand I took a chance Bought a wedding band And I got down on one knee You smiled said to me, are you gonna kiss me or There's the hit they will be playing for the rest of their career. Uh, what a great song. And by the way, you can continue to watch on uh, Watch the Concert Series now on foxandfriends.com. It's the oh, All-American con Summer Concert Series, and we thank Keurig for bringing that to us, for allowing us to have that music on on Friday mornings during the summer and bring it to you at home. Yeah, and, I set my watch to it. And Thompson Square, by the way, fantastic. And yes. they got a brand new uh, album drops today. I used to live on Thompson yeah. Square. <laughs> really? I don't think it's related to the, oh, to the group oh, oh, oh. at all. But, uh, but just trying to participate. There's nothing you will ever bring up to Araldo, and he won't have a personal experience. <laughs> right. and he, he, does, he doesn't have to make right. it up. David Never. Bossy, you're playing outside right next to Pete. I don't know why you chose Pete over me, but we'll talk about that later. Ooh. And Geraldo Rivera right here talking nice about the most you. important news of the day. Welcome, Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for being here. All right, here. so Samantha B. got in some trouble for what she said, the vile oh, comment that she trouble. said about um, Ivanka Trump. If you missed it, we bleeped out the cuss word, but listen to this. Let me just say, one mother to another, do something about your dad's immigration practices, you feckless he listens to you. Put on something tight and low cut and tell your father to stop it. Well, the president speaks for itself. The president uh, tweeting this morning in response saying this. Why aren't they firing no talent Samantha B for the horrible language used on her low ratings show? A total double standard. But that's okay. We are winning and we'll be doing so for a long time to come. David, I'll, I'll start with you. It, it, it speaks for itself. These people uh, have Trump derangement syndrome. They are sick. Uh, they're demented. It, it, for somebody to say this about Ivanka Trump, who's a, who is a friend of mine, and, and I, I, I hold her in the highest regard. She is incredibly talented on her own right, but she's a wife, a mom, a daughter. To say these types of things is, we've used the word vile. It, it, Samantha B. Uh, needs her mouth washed out with soap or you know, I don't know what happened to her in her childhood, but she is a literally no town. I never heard of her before, but we are where we are in this Hollywood mentality of the, anything the left wants to say, they get away with it. Look at Keith Oberman. Yeah, Geraldo, yes, Keith so Oberman. much hatred now. If you don't, if you disagree with someone, that's okay, but you don't have to call them this word. Oh, for sure. Uh, first, to uh, David's point about uh, he never heard of her before, I believe that this was a premeditated. Uh, egregious attack on Ivanka Trump. I believe that it went up to the highest levels at TBS. This could not have been launched just spontaneously. It is a tape show. They bleeped out the uh, the offending word. Uh, I, before no, no, I, we be, did. Uh, well, they, uh, they bleeped it out. They, I, they, I bleeped, they, they bleeped they the c word. I, I believe they did. 
bleep this. Either. I don't think so. Oh no. I think it, well, our producers are saying no. That makes it even worse. That makes it even worse. That makes it even worse. Um, but but a, a, a couple of things. First of all, on the on the issue, and I don't think we should overlook the issue. I agree with the left, generally speaking, that the no, zero tolerance policy at the border, separating children from their parents, is immoral. That's what I believe in terms of the substantive issue. I also believe that Samantha B. That attack was so vile. It was so destructive. It, it was not only calling her the C-word, which in my view is the gender equivalent of the N-word. It is the bomb when you are talking to a woman. And this is a feminist comedian talking to another woman and using the C-word. I think it is absolutely intolerable. Furthermore, she also alludes to incest or an incestuous uh, appeal between the first daughter and the president of the United States. This is Roseanne in leftist or liberal clothing. I think that the response is, uh, should be uh, She has no very business serious. being on television. She just has no business. These people are irresponsible. Like Gerardo said, somebody approved this script. This was scripted. This was uh, planned. Somebody needs to be held accountable for this. Just to apologize, Roseanne tried to apologize. They kick her off the air. You know, and, and, and the double standard is outrageous. This president does not deserve this, but they only are serving to help this president because the American people wake up themselves. and they expose themselves and the American people realize that these people, no matter what this president does, nothing is good enough. They will never agree with him. And just things like this help this president. And you know what? I, I'm grateful for their outrageousness. Now, Geraldo, you kind of compared what she said to what Roseanne said. In my mind, what Roseanne said is the ultimate worst. I mean, that's a race. That's a human race you're talking about. It's horrible. About. You can't get any lower than Absolutely. that. Absolutely. But what Samantha B did, if you want to talk about hypocrisy, and I don't think you can equate it to Roseanne, I think you can, if this were, if this were a conservative on air talking about the Obama girls, Heave -ho. Or exactly, yeah. gone. That's, Heave -ho. that's the double standard. Now, I don't, I don't want this person fired, or I don't want an advertiser boycott. That is, it's happening. that is either. two major that's boycotts. Right. That's, uh, that, that is, I, I that's not my thing. If, if that's what the, yeah. the, the commercial interests decide, so be it. But I think this is an example of how the political divide, the ideological divide in this country is encouraging people to abandon norms. Where are we as a society when you can make an ape joke about uh, an African-American woman? What, what, where did we go? What happened to the evolution of our society? You can make a C joke, a feminist can make a C joke uh, about uh, another, another woman, woman and who happens to be, as David said, the mother and uh, you know, working for no pay. How about we get uh, helping serve How about we don't do that anymore? We can have great debates on the ideas and on policy, but why is everything now in the gutter? Why has everything become personal? And it's all because they hate this president. And I say this, uh, they hate this president more than they love this country, the left. The Hollywood derangement that they have out there, they just are out of touch with reality. What is it? What is it? Is it the deep state? Are they just try <laughs> anything that a conservative does? They want to go after their, their love life and their, their livelihood and their, their livelihood. money, their children. When, 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 when somebody who's a conservative does something, the left orchestrates corporate America to boycott. Yeah. This is outrageous. We must boycott. You must pull your ads. Look what happened um, here on, on, on this channel, right, um, with, with Laura's show. They tried to do that, and it backfired. Well, look what happened to Dinesh D'Souza. Yes. Under the previous administration, he admitted to something, but they brought the full weight of the federal government on him. As He became a target Absolutely. because of his anti-Hillary, anti-Obama. The movie was a big Hillary. hit. The books are a big hit, and he was very very critical of President Obama. He admits that when it came to campaign finance, he gave uh, too much or uh, through straw buyers. But to get uh, a year in prison, over the top, the president thought. Here's what he said about getting the pardon yesterday. No American in our country's history has ever been um, indicted, let alone prosecuted, let alone locked up. Uh, for doing what I did. This was a vindictive political hit that was kind of aimed at putting me uh, out of business, essentially making, uh, destroying my credibility, making, making it impossible for me to make movies, write books. Uh, in that sense, it failed, but it still left a cloud over me. I would be a lifelong felon. I would never be able to vote. 
uh, and uh, never have my full rights. And so I'm very grateful to President Trump for giving me those rights back. He said upon reviewing it, he felt a great injustice had been done and that using his power, he was going to uh, rectify it, sort of clear the slate. And he said he just wanted me to be out there, to be a bigger voice than ever, defending the principles that I believe in. David, your reaction to the pardon? I am so happy for Dinesh. This is, this, this is what presidential prerogatives about pardons is about. He, this is a grave injustice to Dinesh, and I'm, I'm happy that he's uh, being made whole through this. But let's talk about this for a minute, because everybody's talking about the pardons. You know, it's one of the things presidents can do. Um, but most presidents are politicians, and they do them in the secret, in the dark, on their way out the door in the last minutes of their administration. Mark Rich gets a financial benefactor of Bill Clinton, gets pardoned at the last moment. You know, you got Oscar Rivera, who uh, is an FALN terrorist, bombed France's Tavern down the street here, murdered Americans and was pardoned by Obama. You know, we have serious, and it does it on the way out, Bradley Manning, right, gets a pardon by Obama. A traitor to this country gets pardoned. And still angry about it. Geraldo, do you feel the same way as a lawyer? I, I do about uh, the, the niche, who I, who I don't know, but I think he was harshly treated and, uh, and over-sentenced. But I also agree 100% if the president, uh, he has alluded to this, but if he follows through, I think Martha Stewart, what she did was did not merit the absolute humiliation and prison sentence by she, James Comey. She got uh, Rob Blagojevich, the governor of Illinois, got 18 years for what I didn't even think was a crime. He should be pardoned immediately, or his sentence commuted. I think would be more appropriate. Furthermore, I think that my dear friends, Bernard Carrick, the New York City Police Commissioner, who got three years for absolute bogus charges about a a cheap paint job is in his apartment. Uh, the, the Commissioner Carrick should be uh, pardoned, as should Michael Grimm, the Republican congressman in Staten Island. They went after him for campaign finance violations. They found none, so they got him for hiring two undocumented Mexicans in the kitchen and, and stripped him of his law degree. Went to jail for a year. He should be pardoned as well. He's running now against uh, uh, Dan Donovan, the current congressman uh, in the Republican primary out in Staten Island. I think the pardon power, and, and listen, with Martha Stewart, Rob Blagojevich, I have something else in common with them. I was also on Celebrity Apprentice, as you all know. So I would like the president to give me a prospective pardon just in, in case, case I do, do something. Absolutely. Like that. <laughs> well, just give him like a, you know, get out of jail free card. Yeah, that's, so that's it's not like the president said everyone. He's got 82 requests for pardons, uh, 98, uh, and he's regret he's, he's rejected 82 of them, 98 requests, uh, over 2,108 petitions. So he's got a, a, a full plate. Look, there are members of the military, right, who have had to make incredible decisions, split-second decisions, who have been prosecuted, whether it's on he, the battlefield somewhere in Iraq. Yeah. And, and, and I think this president who... Clinton whether, Lorenz. Yes. Right, right, whether, it's, whether it's that gentleman or the person who took a photograph of his workstation on a submarine, who was prosecuted and sent to Leavenworth for years and years. Th this president is going to look at some of those injustices okay. and say, you know what, enough's enough. And he's doing it while in office as opposed to on his way out the door, a coward's way. And just the last word for me, Bravo, Kim Kardashian. This is the week of the Kims. You have Kim Jong Un, the other Ch Kim Jong, the other guy, and another Kim, and uh, Kim Billy Gilfoyles. Now Kim Kardashian <laughs> goes to the White House uh, to plead for the pardon of this uh, nonviolent drug offender, first-time drug offender, Grandmother. life with no possibility of parole. It, should have, it, it could have been 20 to life. That would have been very harsh, and at least you'd have a possibility of parole. I think that Kim Kardashian, using her celebrity in this regard, is, I think, admirable. All right. Thanks, Geraldo. Thank Thanks, Thanks, guys. For Thanks, Thanks for having us. All right. Coming up straight ahead, just hours from now, a North Korean delegation will arrive in Washington, D.C. and hand deliver a paper to the President of the United States. It's a letter from Kim Jong-un. What will it say? Will it be in English? <laughs> Good Friday morning to you. We have a Fox News alert. Brand new photos of a suspected deputy killer taken days before the murder. There's now a $46,000 reward for information leading to Stephen Wiggins. He's accused of killing Sergeant Deputy Daniel Baker and stealing his gun. He's capable of murdering one of our brothers, one of our servants in our community that is an urgent and immediate threat to the public safety. If you'd like to donate to Baker's family, we put a link to the GoFundMe page on foxandfriends.com. An illegal immigrant deported at least twice charged with murder in a deadly hit and run. 
Police say Eddie Lopez Hernandez was speeding and high on drugs when he slammed into a family in Texas. 17 year old Brittany Baez killed in the crash. Lopez Hernandez from Guatemala now under an immigration detainer. Let's look at your headlines. I will send it back to you. All Thanks, Jillian. Right. Thank you. Right. Thanks, Jillian. 18 minutes after the top of the hour. And to a Fox News alert, President Trump will receive a top secret letter straight from the desk of the dictator Kim Jong un today. Kevin, Kevin Cork is live at the White House with the latest for us. Hey, Kevin. Hey guys, good morning. If Kim Jong Chol makes his way here, he would be the highest ranking North Korean official to have come to the White House in about two decades. Now, of course, yesterday in the city, Mike Pompeo, our newly minted Secretary of State, did meet with high ranking North Korean officials. In fact, he took to Twitter to describe that meeting and he also described the president's thinking. He said the president has made it clear that if Kim Jong un denuclearizes, there's a brighter path for the DPRK. We envision a strong, connected, secure, and prosperous North Korea that maintains its cultural heritage but is integrated into the community of nations. Countries face a pivotal moment in our relationship in which it could be nothing short of tragic to let this opportunity go to waste. Of course, uh, this uh, letter, hand delivered, that sort of underscores the importance of it. We'll have all the details if it happens. Back to you. Well, yeah, when, when they happen, I'm sure it's going to be a surprise. And maybe the president will come out and walk over to you, Kevin, and say, okay, <laughs> it's back on. June 12th, get your tickets to Singapore. That's great. Let's Pompeo see said it is expected, so we'll keep you posted. Let's hope JetBlue flies there so you get to watch television. It's 21 hours. <laughs> Direct TV. Have you heard what former President Obama said about President Trump? He called him a cartoon. Former Education Secretary Bill Bennett on that next. But first, here's Thompson Square performing Masterpiece. Some men spend a lifetime trying to somehow leave their mark. Waiting and waiting, a grand inspiration to spark. To leave behind something remembered, something everyone has heard of. Some people build it. Some people paint it, some people do it with love. Shakespeare sure knew how to ride down. Good Friday morning. Some quick headlines. Buy health care or pay up. New Jersey Governor Phil Murphy restoring the individual health care mandate tax for his state. The Obamacare rule requires people to buy insurance or pay a hefty fine. President Trump repealed the federal mandate last year. And Illinois ratifying the Equal Rights Amendment 36 years after its deadline. It ensures equal rights to all Americans regardless of gender. Illinois now brings the tally to 37 states, just one shy of the 38 needed to amend the Constitution. The measure passed Congress in 1972. Brian? Thanks, Julian. Former President Obama shell-shocked over President Trump's 2016 election win. How do we know? Ben Rhodes told us in his new memoir by, you know, Ben Rhodes was Mr. Everything for the President, especially on foreign policy. One of the quotes I thought was noteworthy, I want to share with you before we bring in a guest. He said this, according to Ben Rhodes about the president, maybe this is what people want, meaning President Trump being elected. I've got the economy set up well for him. No facts, no consequences. They can just have a cartoon. My sense is the president's a cartoon. Let's join, let's, uh, join uh, Bill Bennett now, former education secretary for Ronald Reagan, has done so much more. So that's what he really thought. It's not like he said it to, uh, to an interviewer. That's what he told to Ben Rhodes in confidence. What do you think about the fact that he thinks that? Yeah, well, uh, this cartoon character came to life and is uh, refuting and taking on just about everything that Obama stood for. Look, they were in shock. They couldn't believe it. But a lot of the country was in shock. I still replay those uh, network uh, tears uh, from uh, election night. But uh, no, they're surprised. Look, no one was more assured uh, of his own rightness than Barack Obama. So when this occurred, um, they were, you know, the, the reaction was, how could this, how could this happen? Note, though, I understand, I've read the book, Brian, that they then say, or Rhodes says, well, of course, it was Hillary uh, who was running on the same campaign we beat her on. So they're always right, uh, and, um, and our side's always wrong. Yeah, so he said, yeah, well, I should have known that Hillary is vulnerable because that's how we beat her in 2008. Right, uh, right Attacking right. her uh, the way he did, except for they factored in that Donald Trump used racism and other things, uh, so that's an additional hit. I want to bring you to this quote. Uh, President Obama, 
Maybe we push too far. Maybe people just want to fall back into their tribe. What do you think he means by that? I think he means uh, what we heard him on, caught him on tape earlier in the administration when he talked about guns and religion and so on. You know, he is, uh, as been rightly described, as a transnational agnostic liberal. Uh, and here the American people still cling to flag, to country, to their faith, to their guns. Uh, and he just doesn't understand it. Remember early on in the administration, this is when I th these great giveaways, when he talked about how bad the economy was uh, under Bush. And he said, you know, mom goes to the market and look at the price of arugula. Arugula? A lot of Americans said, what the heck is arugula? You know, this is a guy, you know, who goes to all the right places, went to all the right universities, doesn't quite understand what the American people are about. Never, never got it. Can, can I just insert the one I like that I heard was when he tried to explain to Rhodes or comfort him. He said, uh, Ben, there are more stars in the sky than there are grains of sand. Huh. Profound. What exactly does that tell you? I don't know. I guess maybe I'm not deep enough. I, I you're not. You're not deep enough. Hey, Tom Brady says to Belichick, "Why did we lose to the Eagles? There are more stars in the sky than there are grains of sand." Uh, no, the Eagles were better. Yeah, Trump he, was better. They got more points than us, and the yes, guy who ran the right. uh, that we couldn't tape their practices like we did earlier. Uh, this is dumbness proposing as profundity is what it is. Yeah. All right, uh, Bill. It's fascinating. I actually am very. I'm looking forward to reading it. Uh, I don't love when presidents criticize other presidents, but you can't blame Barack Obama here. That's what he was saying to his aide. Uh, thanks so much, Bill. I appreciate it. Always. Good to see you. Good to see you. Bye. Thanks. Uh, coming up straight ahead, President Trump calling for Samantha Bee to be fired after her vulgar remark about his, her, uh, his daughter, Ivanka. Judge Janine is here. She's in the carrot corner. She weighs in next. I believe this time she's going to give her opinion. But first, here's Thompson Square performing If I Didn't Have You. I love this song. Make it louder. We are back with a Fox News alert. The new jobs report wow. released just moments ago. All right. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the U.S. economy adding 223,000 jobs in May. That is up from 164,000 added last month in April. Wow. And the May unemployment rate is 3.8 now, drops from 3.9 in April. So I, I was reading this this morning. I think that's about 20,000 more than they projected. For this uh, month. Yeah, for this month. So. Looks like revised up as well. I have to check those April numbers. But those are big, big monthly numbers. Do you know who's here today? I do. Hmm. Uh, we, we saved the best for Fridays, don't <laughs> we? Right. Judge Judy Hero. And yeah, she, she is, is the it. author of that book right there, That's Liars, coming out. Leakers, and Liberals. When is it coming out? It's coming out, uh, I think, the 1st of July. And uh, we went crazy. You know what? The news changes in, yes. this, this, in the Trump presidency every three seconds. So then you go back and you add something to the book. But I think you're going to like the book. It's all me. <laughs> It's so, so you're, we love you, so we love you. All my opinions. It's like a million opens. Right, and, and people love you. They do? Yes, yeah, and no they question. Do. That, they yeah. do. It's like that was just my mom. No. Hi, mom. All no. right. We, we get the ratings. Me. They love you. All right, Samantha B., what's your reaction? Well, you know, I think that when she called Ivanka uh, a feckless and then a word that most people have never even mouthed, uh, you know it what? was. We have the sound bite. You want to play it? Yeah, I do. And I want. Yes. Let's do it. You know, Ivanka, that's a beautiful photo of you and your child, but let me just say, one mother to another, do something about your dad's immigration practices, you feckless <laughs> He listens to you. Put on something tight and low cut and tell your father to stop it. In addition to that outrageous work, uh, word, put on something tight and low suggesting that there is some inappropriate thing going on. I mean, if this happened to Chelsea Clinton, do you think that woman would even be going to the office getting a social change award? Do you think that she would be apologizing? She'd be out of the country. I mean, look at what happened to Dinesh D'Souza, and thank goodness the president uh, is pardoning him. This is a guy who, d who did a movie, and they looked for, against, against Obama, and they looked for anything they could to put him in jail, and they did. That, the Obama administration, and this happens to a, uh, a liberal a president's daughter, it's totally different. And the irony here is Ivanka has devoted her mm -hmm. career to empowering women, and these women want to take her down. Judge, how do you fight the double standard? 
That's what it comes down to. There's a clear double standard. How do you change that? You know how you change it is I think that we're going to get to a point where the cacophony, where it is so loud that we're people that say, I, I think we're at that right. point. We can't take it anymore. So what do we do? What we have to do is it all has to be brought down. The shame of it is the left has said for years, we're so great. We love everybody. I have never seen such intolerant haters. They don't let the right speak. They don't want them to show up at colleges. They call us every name in the book, things that we wouldn't dare do. You know, was I crazy about Obama? No, but I sucked it up. All right. And they hate Donald Trump. And you just saw the numbers there. It is he what he's doing for this country is phenomenal. Well, a couple of things. Uh, when Roseanne went down justifiably, yeah. you knew more was coming. Yeah. Now look for every show to be scrutinized on every side. Now they're going to go back through the Samantha B shows. She's got not. If you look at her background, she gets like she's up for like four major awards every year. That's right. That wasn't the only time there was something vile on her show. And then when people look back at Joy Reid's podcast oh. and tweets. And they're going to look at that. So everybody's background and current shows are up for scrutiny. Spon two sponsors already left her show. Yeah, but I just I just don't know where this ends. I'm not saying anyone. I'm not saying anything she did is right. I just get worried about where this is going to end. Right, because you believe in the First Amendment. You believe that yes. people should say whatever they want as long as you she know what is the threat. She didn't have a bad day. She taped that. Yeah, yeah, she taped it. And what that means is that everybody heard it. Everybody looked at it again. They could have changed anything. And they liked it and they let it go. But you know what? TBS has said, uh, you know, uh, that she took the right action. And I, I agree with Roseanne. But you know what the problem with Roseanne? Why did they have to cancel the whole show? You know, there are all those people who were punished, the cameramen, the script writers, the actors. I mean, because of what one they person did. Hers, but it, but that Roseanne. tells me there's something deeper. That tells me that it was a whole concept that was this huge number one scripted show and broadcast. We're going to send it down the river because it's pro-Trump. All right, let's talk a, a little bit of uh, legal stuff. Andrew Bye. McCabe in additional trouble, it seems. <laughs> now, there's something going on that a legal expert like you might be, indicate that they, she, he might be in uh, a criminal, he might have a criminal issue on hand. What is it about Andrew McCabe and yeah, the scrutiny thank scandal? Andrew McCabe lied at least four times. He lied not only to members of the Department of Justice, but he lied to the Inspector General. He was given the opportunity to take it back. He did not. That didn't happen to Martha Stewart. That didn't happen to, what is it, Roger Clemens. You don't get a chance to take it back. This guy needs to be indicted. Comey was questioned about him. Some ah. say that's because they could look at something criminal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's why. They're looking at something. They're looking at perjury. Five years in prison for lying to the FBI. Guys, this is real easy. This is a no-brainer. But what bringing Comey into it tells me is that Comey and McCabe were at each other's uh, 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 Yeah, they were at odds yeah. a little bit. Because yeah. McCabe yep. said Comey told me to leak it. Comey said I never let him leak it. So now what we've got is Comey, who was friends with the prosecutor, and Comey is now saying, you know what, I didn't give him permission to leak anything, and he lied to yep. me. Someone's going this under the bus. This is the end of Andrew yeah. McCabe. Okay, you said your mom watches. Hi, Mom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not too long ago, your mama was giving birth to you this weekend. So oh, we stop it. have something special for you. Come on. Come, come on, on out. What? Happy well, birthday. Oh, 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 thank you. Thank you all morning. I was. Oh, right, look at that. Oh, thank you. Happy How did you know it was my birthday? Oh, oh, we have Google. You very well. We have Google. 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 Yeah, oh, absolutely. thank you so look much. Look at that. Look the camera. Cake. Take a look, Okay, Dave. take a look. And they spell my name right and everything. J A N I N. And they even put Judge. Yeah. Judge Janine. Yeah, Judge well, Janine. Janine will do. Tonight, Janine will do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks. Happy birthday. Great Congratulations great on the success. I look forward to that book. First oh, week in July. Thank you. Thank right. you. Right. Thanks, guys. And well, can, for honor of us, would you toss to Jillian? Uh, okay. And now Jillian's going to give us the weather. No. <laughs> Jillian, <laughs> Jillian's going to give us the news. Almost right. perfect. Right, good. Happy right. birthday to you, <laughs> Judge. Fabulous. All right. Let's get you caught up on some of your headlines that we're following, starting with this. An illegal immigrant who's been deported multiple times now facing the death penalty. The sentencing phase now underway for Gustava Tijerina Sandoval after he was found guilty in the 2014 murder of an off-duty Texas Border Patrol agent. Javier Vega Jr. gunned down in front of his family after Sandoval tried to rob him.
Sandoval's alleged accomplice, Ismael Hernandez Vallejo, is awaiting trial for the same charges. A man is hit in the head with an axe driving down the highway. Take a look. You can see the hole in the cracked windshield after it sliced right through. The Canadian man passed out and has no idea where the axe came from. But how about this? It's not the first time this has happened to the guy. Ten years ago, a steel rod went through his driver's side window. Incredible. You remember the 30-year-old jobless man who was evicted from his parents' home? Well, finally, he will be hitting the road today. Michael Rotundo seen packing up his boxes. He has to be out by noon today. His parents asked him to leave five times, even offered him money to find a new place, but he didn't, so they went to court. Rotundo plans to appeal, even though he claims he has no interest in living in his parents' home. So look at your headlines. Right, funny way of showing it by staying <laughs> in the parents' weird, home. It's a weird <laughs> story. Get enough of that There's story. so much more going on. He's great. About. Right. I hope they just remain in court for a long time so we can keep talking about it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> if you wanted to find Janice Dean, where would we go? Probably outside with, with everyone else. Yes. Wave, everybody. Yay. Yes, it's the beginning of our all American summer concert series. You know what? The rain has held off. We love it. Let's take a look at the maps real quick. Uh, the temperatures here in New York City in the 70s is a little humid. Actually, 67 right now. We're getting into the 70s later on today. We're going to see the potential for rain in the forecast along the eastern seaboard all this weekend. So watch out for the potential of flash flooding uh, and also severe storms. Okay, if you live across the central U.S., large hail, damaging winds, isolated tornadoes. So know what to do if there is a watch or a warning. Are you guys ready for more Thompson Square? Yeah. Oh my gosh, fantastic! Cute. We'll be out there Enjoy. soon. Yeah, Can't we're wait. gonna be out on the turf in just a moment. It's gonna be nice. All right, uh, thanks, uh, Janice. 19 minutes before the top of the hour. New tariffs now in effect, and the European Union and our allies vowing to retaliate. Steve Hilton says they won't win this trade war. He'll explain it to us next. But as Janice just said, here's Thompson Square performing everything I shouldn't be thinking. Fence needs bending, house needs pain. I got a million things that need to be done. These tariffs are totally unacceptable. These tariffs are an affront to the long-standing security partnership between Canada and the United States. U.S. allies threatening to retaliate after President Trump imposed new tariffs overnight on steel and aluminum imports affecting Canada, Mexico, and the EU. So what does this mean for free and fair trade? Here to react is host of The Next Revolution and the CEO of CrowdPAC, our friend Steve Hilton, former director of strategy for the British Prime Minister David Cameron. Hey, Steve, what's your reaction to all this? Look, it's just hilarious to watch all these people suddenly up in arms about this allegedly free and fair trade system that we have. We don't have free and fair trade now. The rules on trade have been rigged against the USA for many, many decades, not just years. Just look at the EU. On average, the tariffs that the EU places on American exports to the EU are nearly twice as high as those that we impose on stuff that comes to us from the EU. Just take cars, where it's four times as high. When we sell our cars to Europe, they charge 10%. When they sell their cars right. to us, we charge 2.5%. So it's never been fair. And finally, we've got a president that's fighting back. Of course, they don't like it. So, Steve, uh, if we raise them, is there any prospect of them actually lowering them then? Can we get that impact? Because that's the best one. Get rid of the tariffs altogether. Yeah, it's a negotiation, and that's what we're seeing from this president. All along, what he said on trade is completely reasonable, which is, I believe in trade, I believe in free trade, but it's got to be fair. And the word that he mm -hmm. keeps using is reciprocal. Remember, he uses that word the whole time. If you put tariffs on our stuff, we'll put tariffs on your stuff. If you don't like it, then let's have a negotiation right. and lower yeah. them together. F that is the right way to go. Final thought on this. Uh, I was watching the BBC uh, last night, and they were saying, does America realize they have have 20 percent of the world stay uh, world trade but the people that they're putting tariffs on have 80 percent so if they answer us back with retribution are you concerned 
No, because if you look at the trade balances within that, we, usually we're on the, on the losing end of that with the, with the tariffs that are being imposed at the moment. With the EU, they sell much more stuff to us than we do to them. And so I think in the end, they're going to realize that this is going to harm them if they don't actually realize that p making the rules fair, which is all that President Trump wants, and make a level playing field, is in their interest just as much as it is in ours. Mm. All right. Steve Hilton, thanks for joining us. Your show? That's right. That's right. Sunday right. nights. Thanks, Steve. Appreciate Thank you, Steve. Have a great weekend. Coming up next, Thompson Square debuts their new song, A Love Like This. Yep, but first, <laughs> Bill Hammer. <laughs> He's going to be working three hours a day soon. Yes, yeah, very, very soon. You come and join, okay? We're going to need you. Uh, good morning. Uh, that band sounds great, by the way. Really good stuff there. I thought we were going to hear some music. <laughs> Who am I, right? On the economy, we are cooking, folks. Breaking news, what it means for you and your family. Coming up, big day in North Korea. Letter goes to the White House. What is in the letter? Outrage growing over the Samantha Bee comment. Can she hang on or will she be Roseanne? And the president puts border security in the spotlight. We will show you how. Coming up in 10 minutes on a Friday morning. We'll see you then. Hey, everyone. <laughs> Stage, hey, you know? have you have you guys all enjoyed Thompson Square for the last hour? Yes. And it's not raining. All right, it's amazing because we have the real grass here and it needed the water. <laughs> but their new album drops today, and I say drops because I know the music industry. It is called the song they're going to sing for us today is a love like this. Are y'all ready? Let's yeah. Okay. Yeah. Take, it Take it away. Take it away. Tell kids, just dots on the map. Well, no, what's the chances of that? Sip in the same drink, sing about the same night. Funny how some things turn just right. He was an old shot kids. He was a last call risk. That's how it all happened. That's how it all started. Just starts on the map. Wound up here, what's the chance?